Neither Lucy nor the Laetoli footprints uh, were made by what we consider humans today. Other such beings, such as Cron Magnons, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals, walked the earth before we did. DNA evidence collected concludes that there's no link between any of these beings to each other. There's kind of a missing link. The closest example I can think of on how they might relate to one another as hominids is that they could be considered a separate species from one another. Similar in many characteristics, but different. Similar because uh, between the difference it's like a difference between a robin and an eagle. Both can fly, but they are certainly not nearly the same kind of bird. You can kind of put that in a similar perspective with uh, Cro-Mangons, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals. They might have looked similar, but they're really not. So now that we've seen about how hominids first appeared on Earth, now we're going to go into where they came from and where they ended up. From this map, you can see where the continent these hominids started. Well, if you trace these arrows backwards, you can see the area was Central Africa. The dates on these maps don't identify when hominids were there, but it shows the time when they started to leave. Here we notice that hominids started leaving Central Africa about 150,000 and 100,000 years ago, somewhere in there. This was done based upon the artifacts that scientists have found in different areas around the region and around the world. And from that, we can get an idea of when they showed up in different areas around the globe. So let's look at where humans have migrated to and what we can learn from it. Humans, such as ourselves, are known as Homo sapiens, which means wise men. Due to the brain size and how it compares to other hominids, basically it means our brains were bigger than those other hominids that have been seen. Eventually, Homo erectus, which is another type of hominid, and Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa. Early on, humans were nomads, or highly mobile people, who moved from place to place, forging for new sources of food. We also know that early humans were hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers are simply those people whose food supply depended upon them hunting animals and collecting plant foods. As I mentioned in the last slide, it's estimated that these groups started leaving Africa around 125,000 years ago, even though, also as I mentioned before, humans have been around, according to science, three and a half million years ago. So for that long time frame, they kind of stayed in the same place up until 125,000 years ago. As far as we can tell, humans began settling Europe around 33,000 years ago, China around 67,000 years ago, Australia 38,000 years, and North America around 12,000 years ago. South America between 12 and 33,000 years ago. Some of these time frames vary based upon known archaeological fa facts and assumptions. So there's obviously nobody really there. There's no hard evidence uh, of documents to show that they were there. This is just based on what archaeologists have found with uh, their evidence uh, while researching. Another way that we know these dates uh, is due to similar stone tool artifacts found in different regions that date to roughly the same time period. Geologists uh, have found the age of rocks and based upon the age of rocks they can deduce when they were used as tools. Finding uh, of these tools shows that early humans used technology to meet their needs. Keep in mind technology simply means the applying of knowledge and tools and inventions to meet their needs. What we call technology today is much different than the technology back then. Using new types of things to create jobs to get a job done. To create items to get a job done. 
That's kind of what technology is. So back then an arrowhead is a type of technology. Creating a spear or a spoon or a hammer. Those are tools, or uh, uh, technology tools, that these people would have developed. So technology today means much different. There's something much different than what it, we call it or consider it from back then. So you may be asking yourself, why did they leave Africa? Well, if everyone is living in the same place, there's going to be competition with other humans for food, room, and other resources. They would likely have followed the animal herds. Remember, these people were hunter-gatherers. They go where the food is. If the food moves, so do they. And simply, people left Africa because of human curiosity. What's over that hill? Let's go find out. Human curiosity can be attributed to many parts of human history, which we will be looking at in future unit levels uh, as we go forward. Instead of following the herds of animals, why not find a spot to call home and live off the land? Agriculture changes everything. Early nomads lived in bands of 25 to 70 people as best as we can tell. They worked together for mutual survival. Around 10,000 years ago though, during the Neolithic Revolution, people began the art of farming. Based upon some evidence, farming actually happened accidentally when some women scattered some seeds near a campsite and noticed that the crops growing there, or noticed crops growing there when they came back the following season. It is assumed that the women did this because it was accepted that it was the men who would do the most dangerous hunting, since they were typically more physical apt to do it, and the women would do the gathering. So the women would see these changes because they'd be gathering from the soil and from the earth, where the men, they're just more interested in shooting their deer or their elephant or whatever. Rising temperatures worldwide would also provide for longer growing seasons. This would also have allowed those who began planting food to allow their harvests to grow longer and create a better and useful crop. The longer the planting season, the better the crop. It didn't take them long to realize that farming produced more food than hunting or gathering and that they did not have to go far to do the farming. Now the nomads could stay in one place in one area and make enough food for everyone without having to do a lot of hunting. And here's just a cute little comic strip. I'm tired of hunting and gathering too, but nobody's invented the grocery store. Once the ability to farm and food had started taking root, more food provided for higher populations, and thus more laborers. Now we start seeing an early population explosion. And this holds true today. In areas where food increases, we also see an increase in population. Due to labor and farming methods, permanent settlements began to develop. From here, we see permanent settlements turn into villages, villages turn into cities, and cities turn into entire civilizations. Once you reach a certain population, you can begin the specialization of skills. Now everybody doesn't need to farm because you've got enough farmers to feed more people than it takes to produce the food. Simply put, specialization is the development of skills in a specific kind of work other than farming. An example would be instead of farming, a person might make stone tools or help those that do do the farming. Originally, to come up with the land to plant, the people would use what we know as a slash and burn farming. The cutting down and burning of trees and foliage, allowing for the nutrients in the soil to develop. Obviously, back then, they probably didn't know anything about nutrients other than the fact that it was making their crops better. The next advancement was the use of the domestication or taming of animals. 
Think of it this way. Would you rather go hunting for your meat, or would you rather go under the back, find a good cow in your fenced-in area, and kill it? Imagine the time saved and the fact that you can control all aspects of obtaining your food. Not only can you simply just produce your own fruits and vegetables from the field, now you can also tame your wild animals or tame your animals, keep them in a fenced in area, and kill them for the meat and the protein. You've got the best world. You don't have to go anywhere in order to survive. You can do it all within a small area. Coming up next in our next lecture, eventually all of this farming and domestication advancements would lead up to the creation of the first civilization on earth in the region known as Mesopotamia. This first civilization would also be known as Sumar, which you can see on the bottom right hand of the screen here. There you have it. You've completed your first online lecture. If you miss something or are uncertain of something, please feel free to go back and review the materials if you need. I would also like to remind you that although we went through a lot of information here, your textbook has even more. This lecture was to give you an insight and highlight on some of the supporting details about the materials in the book. Please make sure and take the time to review or at least skim over the textbook to get additional information that I might not have talked about here. If you have any questions about the lecture or related materials, please feel free to contact me so we can get your questions answered quickly. And with that, I'm all done for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class again. Have a great day.